All right. So in this case, we are going to have a summary of uh, what we had uh, considering our gradients. Uh, so you just need to understand the basics. So we are given this part. Let's summarize these findings of what we had before. Remember, between any two points on the line, the gradient is the same or constant, meaning if you are to calculate the gradient along the straight line, the gradient is going to be the same uh, given any condition of points that you are going to use. Like let's say you use these two points or you use these two points, you must have the same gradient. The gradient on a straight line is the same throughout. The coefficient of x in the equation of a line represents the gradient. All right. Given any equation of a straight line, remember if you're given y is equal to mx plus c, this format, m represents the gradient. So if I write an equation of a straight line, y is equal to 2x plus 1, the coefficient of x, this one, is the gradient. So even if I'm given y is equal to 3x like this, without a plus 1, what is important is the coefficient of x. It represents the gradient of the line that you are going to be working with. Then also, the line is decreasing, all right? That is slopes down as read from left to right since the y-axis decreases as the x values increase. That is the gradient is negative. So if a line is decreasing, it must have a negative gradient and an increasing one is supposed to have a positive gradient. That's an increasing function or an increasing line. It must have a positive gradient in terms of the gradient. The gradient is positive. The gradient, remember, is positive. So that's how you can even uh, put that way uh, to say a line is increasing or not. The gradient is going to be positive. The x values and y values as the x is going this side, y is increasing in terms of those values, the input values of x. Y list a line of this nature, as we are inserting the x values, y is going down, y is decreasing. As x values are increasing, y is going to the negative. That is uh, a decrease in terms of the function. All right, so we're not going to waste much time. Remember, we also had a condition where we can calculate this gradient that we are talking about given the points we can calculate this from the points. All right, so our questions was to determine, right, on this exercise for each of the following lines. So I'm just going to work uh, the same concept on one line so that you do understand how these questions are given. Determine the gradient by using any two points on the line. Any two points. Why? Because gradient on a straight line is the same. So whatever that you're going to have there is the same. Like if you're given... This point and this point, you're going to have same gradient with someone who used this point and this point. So just choose any two points of your choice. All right, so let's start with our line A. We're going to just use this line A as our example of how to answer these questions as a summary. So working with the line A, there are three points there. There is a minus six, minus three. There is another point, the origin. It passes through the origin. Uh, zero, zero, and there is also another point given, which is four, two. So to find the gradient, just use any of these two points that you can see there. So let's say you want to use these two points. It's your it's your choice. Use any two points, all right? So in this case, uh, let's say uh, using minus six, minus three, and uh, zero, zero. Let's say these are the two points that I want to use. Remember the gradient we can calculate our m, which is the gradient for, or from the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, remember our introduction of the gradient. So you can name this x1, y1, x2, y2. Then substitute into the formula that you are given the y2, that's a zero there, minus y1, which is minus three. So y1 is a minus three over the x2, which is a zero there, minus x1, which is a minus six like this. So that is going to give us the gradient of this line. So minus and minus, you can even use your calculator there, or minus, minus, that's a plus. So that will be uh, zero plus three, and that will be zero plus six. 
So that's three over six, which is simply going to give us one over two by dividing by three each step. We have got the gradient, which was supposed to be the same even if we're to use the points, these two points. All right, let's say you decide to use the, it's a, it's a choice. Or maybe you decide to work with these two points, these ones. At the end, it's a choice, guys. That one is a choice. So let's say uh, another part using. So you just choose any. There, I just want you to see, guys, that it's the same. So using the point zero, 00 and the point 42. From the same formula, our gradient M, Y2 minus Y1. So you're going to have X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So that's Y2 minus Y1. That's 2 minus a 0 there over x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is a 0 like that. So m, which is the gradient, 2 minus 0, that's 2 over 4, which was going to give us 1 over 2 by reducing by 2, or just use your calculator, which is the same answer as we can see. Same answer. So this is what you're going to have throughout, uh, even if you're to use the other points. So this is what I'm trying to say on these uh, questions. Just pick any. If you want to use these two points, if you want to use these two points on line B, on line C, if you want to use this point and this point, if you want to use this point and this point, if you want to use this point and this point, guys, it's in your hands the way that you want. Guys, just work with many questions. So the other part was to state whether the gradient is positive or negative. To state already you calculated, you can see, is this positive or negative? You can see it. After calculating, guys, you can see that this gradient is positive or not. So from this one of our line A, our gradient is what? Is positive. If to state, if maybe, you know, let's say you, you do not have the gradient. That's where we're supposed to give a question like state. Not like this one where you have calculated. We can see that. You can see that. But if it was not that condition, let's say you haven't calculated all these lines, they are increasingly like this. They have positive gradients. All these lines that we see talking of the uh, line A, the line B, all these lines going up, they have positive gradients. Then with this slope, they have got negative gradients. So talking of the lines such as H, uh, this one, sorry, at H there, at G, at this, uh, this one, they have got negative gradients now. These ones, they've got negative gradients, these lines. The slope, negative. So if you calculate these gradients and obtain a positive on this one, you are actually wrong. The same thing if you calculate your gradient on these lines here that I'm indicating on top and you obtain a negative answer, you're actually wrong. So do revise uh, as many questions. All right, so that's how you can tell. And write down the equation in the form of y is equal to mx. All right, so like I said, I'm going to use a as an example. How are you going to determine that? All right. On line A, if you consider what is happening on these lines, all of these lines that we are seeing here, all of these lines, they have got a special part. They pass through the origin. They pass through the origin. They do not have that condition that we had before where a line is going to be having an x-intercept and y-intercept. These ones, they pass through the origin like this. They do not have a double intercept like to the x and to the y they just pass through the origin these types of lines or these typical lines of this nature which passes through the origin and like that passing through the point is zero zero not any other point but just through the origin their equations are given in the form of y is equal to mx remember it was supposed to be equal to mx plus c like this but the c is the y intercept here the line is passing through the origin. So C is equal to zero. So in short, it is just going to be Y is equal to MX. So that is why we are already given the format. So in this case, considering our line A, the one that we are using, and we need the equation on C, our equation in the form of Y is equal to MX, we are just substituting. Remember, M represents what? The gradient. You have already calculated the gradient. The gradient is one over two. So it's one over two X. So meaning to say for line A, our equation was going to be half x. If you wanted to use the concept of half x plus c, what is the y-intercept? The c it is passing through the origin where that is a zero there. So in short, y will be equal to mx. If it passes through the origin, do not confuse with any other line that is not like that. 
please do not confuse with any other line which is not like that. So that is what you're going to do. On all these lines, you calculate your gradient, then you just write, if the gradient, maybe the gradient in this case, maybe you obtain a gradient of one. So it means it's going to be one X, which is Y is equal to X. Just like that. State whether the lines are increasing or decreasing, explain. Remember here we talked about being increasing or decreasing. So you can even talk of the gradient like this one using example uh, of line A that we are having. We can see from our gradient, it's a positive. That's an increasing. The reason we have got a positive gradient or as the X values are increasing, Y values are also increasing. That's it. These lines, these ones that you have got negative, these ones, they are decreasing functions, these ones. All these ones, they have got negative gradients. They are decreasing. So I want you to answer all these questions using the same uh, approach. You are supposed to work with the points to find your gradient, then state whether the gradient is positive. There was It was not supposed to be like both already you calculated. You can see that the answer is negative or positive. Then write down the equation in the form already we are given the format. M is the gradient. Just substitute if your gradient is minus 2, so it will be minus 2x. If your gradient is 3, y is equal to 3x. Since they have the y-intercept at the origin, since they pass through the origin, so we do not have a condition where C is going to be affected like the normal way that we are used to. All right. So these are the typical questions that we are supposed to expect in our exams. Let's revise as much as we can.